how can we create life in the lab from scratch? What have been the most promising attempts at creating life in the lab from scratch? Has anyone actually been able to do it? Do you think anyone will be able to do it in the near future if they haven't already? Um, can Yeah, I think that um, nobody has made life in the lab from scratch. Lots of people would argue that they have made progress. So Craig Venter, I think the synthesis of a synthetic genome m milestone in, in human uh, uh, achievement. Brilliant. Yeah, can we just walk back and say, what uh, would you say from your perspective, one of the world experts in exactly this area, what does it mean to create life from scratch? Where if you sit back, whether you do it or somebody else does it, it's like, damn, this is, we just created life. Um, well, what I would, I can tell you what I would expect, I would like to be able to do is to go from sand to cells in my lab and and Can I'm, you explain what sand is? You yeah, use just inorganic, poetically. just inorganic stuff. Like, inorganic like, like, stuff. like, basically, just so, so sand is just silicon, silicon oxide with some other ions in it. Maybe some inorganic carbon, some carbonates. Just basically, clearly dead stuff. You you could just grind rocks into sand, and, and, and it would be what in like in a vacuum, so they could remove anything else that could possibly uh, be. Uh, like a shadow of life that can you, assist in the chemical. You could do that. You could insist and say, "Look, I'm going to take and not just inorganic. I I want some. I want to cheat and have some organic, but I want inorganic organic." And I'll explain the play on words in a moment. So I would like to basically put into a world, let's say a completely, you know, uh, a synthetic world, if you like, a closed world. Put some inorganic materials and just literally add some energy in some form, be it lightning or heat, mm -hmm. UV light and run this thing in cycles over time and let it solve the search problem. So it's a, I see the origin of life as a search problem in chemical space. And then I would wait, literally wait for a life form to crawl out of the test tube. That's the joke I tell my group. Mm -hmm. Literally wait uh, 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 for a very, uh, and don't worry, it's gonna be very feeble. It's not gonna take over the world. You know, we, there's ways of ethically containing Famous it. Famous last words. <laughs> Famous, <laughs> indeed, indeed, indeed. But I, 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 you know, this is being recorded, right? It, it'll make you, it, it will not make you look good once it crawls out of the, <laughs> the but, lab and destroys all of human civilization. But yes, that's. But there is very good, there's a very good things you can do to prevent that. You, yes. For instance, if you put stuff in your world, which isn't earth abundant, so let's say we make life based on molybdenum and it escapes, it would die immediately because there's not enough molybdenum in the environment. So we can put in, we can, we can do it, we can do responsible life. Or as I fantasized with my research group on our away day, they would go in, it's, you know, I think it's actually morally, we, we, if, life, if we don't find, if human, until humanity finds life in the universe, this is going on a tangent, it's our moral obligation to make origin of life bombs, identify dead planets and bomb them with our origin of life machines and make yes. them alive. I think it is our moral obligation to do that. Um, I'm sure some people might argue with me about that, but I think that we need more life in the universe. And then we kind of forget we we did it, and then come back. If, if, <laughs> if, and, and then say, so, where did you come from? But coming back to the what I'd expect. So I just say, father, <laughs> are you back? It's. I think this is once again a Rick and Morty episode. It's definitely, it's definitely all Rick and Morty all the way down. <laughs> so we, I imagine, we have this pristine. Um, experiment and everything is you know sanitized and we put in inorganic materials and we we have cycles with them day night cycles up down whatever and we look for evidence of replication and evolution over time and that's what the experiment should be now are there people doing this in the world right now there are a couple of there's some really good groups doing this there's some really interesting scientists doing this around the world they're kind of perhaps too much associated with the scam so uh, and and so they're, they're using molecules that are already were already invented by biology. So there's a bit of replication built in, um, but I still think the work they're do is doing they're doing is amazing. Um, but I would like people to be a bit freer and say, let's just basically shake a load of sand in a box and wait for life to come out because that's what happened on Earth, and so that we have to understand that. Now, how would I know I've been successful? Well, because I'm not obsessing with what molecules are in life now i i would wager a vast quantity of money um i'm not very rich so it'd just be a few dollars but for mm -hmm. me um that the, the the solution space will be different so the the genetic material will be not rna 
the proteins will not be what we think. They would, it would, the solutions will be just completely different. And it might be, and it will be very feeble because that's the other thing we should be able to show um, fairly robustly that even if I did make or someone did make a new life form in the lab, it would be so poor that it's not going to leap out. It is the, the fear about making a lethal life form in the lab from scratch is um, similar to us imagining that we're going to make the Terminator at Boston Dynamics tomorrow. Yeah. It's simply not you and and I and the problem is we don't communicate that properly. I know you you yourself very um you, you explain this very well. You know, there is not the AI catastrophe coming. Mm -hmm. Um we're very far away from that. That doesn't mean we should ignore it. Same with the origin of life catastrophe. It's not coming anytime soon. We shouldn't ignore it. But we shouldn't let that fear stop us from doing those experiments. Okay, well, but this is a much, much longer discussion because there's a lot of details there. I, I would say there's potentials for catastrophic events to happen in much dumber ways. Within, in AI space, there's a lot of ways to create, like uh, social networks are, are creating a kind of uh, accelerated mm -hmm. set of events that we might not be able to control. The, the th social network, virality in the digital space can create mass movements of ideas that can then, if times are tough, create military conflict and all those kinds of things. But that's not intel super intelligent AI. That's an interesting at scale application of AI. And if you look at viruses, viruses are pretty dumb, uh, but at scale, their application is pretty detrimental. And so origin of life, much like all of the kind of virology, you know, um, the very contentious word of gain of function research in virology, sort of like research on viruses, uh, messing with them genetically, that can create a lot of problems if not done well. So we have to be very cautious. So there's a kind of, whenever you're ultra cautious about stuff in AI or in uh, virology and biology, it uh, borders on cynicism, I would say, where it's like everything we do is going to turn out to be destructive and terrible, so I'm just going to sit here and do nothing. Okay, that's a possible solution, except for the fact that somebody's going to do it. It's uh, science and technology progresses, so we have to do it in an ethical way, in a good way, considering in a transparent way, in an open way, uh, considering, um, all the possible positive trajectories that could be taken and making sure as much as possible that we walk those trajectories. So yeah, I don't think Terminator is coming, but a totally unexpected version of Terminator may be around the corner. Yeah, it might be here already. Yeah, so I agree with that. And so going back to the origin of life discussion, I think that in synthetic biology right now, we have to be very careful about how we edit genomes and edit synthetic biology to do things. So that's kind of, that's where things might go wrong in the same way as, uh, you know, Twitter turning ourselves into kind of uh, strange scale effects. Mm -hmm. I would love origin of life research or artificial life research to get to the point where we have those worries. Mm -hmm. Because that's why I think we're just so far away from that. We are just, you know, right now, I think there are two really important um, angles. There is the origin of life people, researchers who are faithfully working on this, and trying to make those molecules, the scam molecules I talk about. And then there are people on the creationist side who are saying, look, the fact you can't make these molecules and you can't make a cell means that um, evolution isn't true and all this other stuff. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, and so, and, and, and I find that really frustrating because actually the origin of life research is all working in good faith, right? Yes. And, and so what I'm trying to do is give origin of life research a little bit more of, a, of, a, of an open, an open context and one of the things i think is important um i really want to make a new life form in my lifetime i really want to prove that life is a general phenomena a bit like gravity in the universe because i think that's going to be really important for humanity's um global psychological state meaning yeah. going forward that's beautifully that's beautifully put so one it will help us understand our, ourselves so that's useful for science but two, it gives us a kind of hope, if not uh, an awe at all the huge amount of alien civilizations that are out there. If you can build life and understand just how easy it is to build life, 
then that's just as good, if not much better than discovering life on another planet. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's cheaper. It's much cheaper <laughs> and much easier and uh, probably much more conclusive because once you're able to create life, like you said, it's a search problem that uh, there's probably a lot of different ways to do it. So yeah. once you create the, once you find the first solution, you probably have all the right methodology for finding all kinds of other solutions.